Order at 6.01 p.m. This is the Board of Directors regular school board meeting for Monday, August 26, 2024. Welcome to all of our visitors, our guests, and media. Uh, tonight we're going to start out with the board and administration roll calls. Mr. Felt, here. Mr. Burns? Yeah. Ms. Danielson? Here. Ms. Nathan? Here. Mr. O'Neill? Here. Mr. Schuler? Here. Mr. Hennan? Here. Mr. Girton? Here. Ms. O'Connell? Here. Ms. Payton? Here. Ms. Dimler? Here. Mr. Veal? Here. Mr. Szymanski? Here. All right, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have received no public comments prior to the start of the meeting. So is there a motion to approve the agenda and addendums? So moved. Second. Motion made by Ms. Danielson, second by Ms. Nathan. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Next up is the consent agenda, which includes the school board minutes for the July 22, 2024 meeting, the personnel consent agenda, and the business consent agenda. Move approval. Second. Have a motion made by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. O'Neill. Any further discussion on the consent agenda items? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. All right, jumping right into the recognitions, presentations, and showcase. Going to start out the night with the girls and boys state participants, Mrs. Knapp. Okay. <laughs> Floor is yours. Hi, I'm Amy Mant. I am fortunate as one of the components of being speech coach, I get to help with uh, finding boys and girls state recipients. I'm going to quick call those four kids up so you can see their lovely faces <laughs> and they can stand here with me. I'm going to speak a little bit about what boys and girls state is and then I will open the floor and you guys can ask them questions and they're all great public speakers so you can throw whatever you want at them. So I'll first welcome up uh, in the order on your piece of paper. I'll first welcome up Al Emma Kruber. Then I will welcome up Lilia Larson. And then I will welcome Ella Hunkins. And finally, Lonnie Gilbert, our lone boy state. <laughs> so first I'm gonna tell you what Boys and Girls State is for those of you who don't know. Uh, it's described as one of the most rep respected and selective educational programs of government institution for U.S. high school students. So this is a program where students become a part of the operation of local, county, and state governments. And they learn rights and privileges and responsibilities of citizens. So every year, <laughs> Boy State is held at St. John's University, so that's where Lonnie attended. And Girl State is held at Bethel University. It's a week-long experience, and they can speak a little bit about that. And how do they get to this point? Well, they are welcome to say, hey, man, I, I would like to go to Girls or Boys State. They're also, uh, the teachers and all the coaches are asked, do you have people that are leaders? And maybe not your captains, but the people that you see that could make a difference. They're, they're not maybe the loudest people in the group. Well, One's on the speech team, so she is the loudest. <laughs> but and we all know Lonnie, he's always performing too. So, but they're not always the loudest kids. They're the kids that we as coaches and teachers see as needing that extra nudge. Like, what can they do given this week-long opportunity with people that you know can implore all their knowledge and help them grow? And so that's how these four are selected. Every year, uh, we are approached by the Watertown American Legion and the New Germany Auxiliary and they usually say you can select one boy and one girl and we're fortunate that they always say however many you can find we will find money for you and so this year we with uh, the trip to Germany that took away a lot of junior boys' opportunities because Germany or boy stayed, it's a tough one. And <laughs> so, so Lonnie went this year and then we were fortunate to get some extra seats for our girls' state. And um, I just want you guys to each, maybe we'll start with Emma here, um, 
Nope, I'm gonna let the board come up with questions for you. Because um, that would be more fun for all of us. Uh, so, these, so these are your four this year. This has been going on for quite some time. Uh, Mr. Hennan is usually has helped be a part of choosing it. And I do not know if we've ever had someone that's gone to Boys Nation. Do you recall? I did not think so either. So in my, this is gonna be my 24th year and you've been here a little longer than me. And so uh, I, I don't ever recall anybody going to Boys Nation. So Lonnie's step and where he made it all the way to Washington DC is a really big deal wow. for a little Watertown mayor. Right? <laughs> all right, so board, these are, you can ask them whatever you would like. What was the most difficult part of working with other students that you were there with? Um, personally, <laughs> I would say um, voicing your opinion, um, because especially at Boys Nation, there's two senators from each state, so hmm. like everybody has different political views, and it's reaching across the aisle while also not compromising your own views. For me, the hardest part good. of working with other people was understanding where they were coming from and making sure to open your mind and your heart to everyone. Um, I say for me, because I'm pretty shy, so just kind of getting out there and like, voicing my opinion took a lot of courage. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I was kind of the same as Lilia. Um, I, I found it uh, kind of hard to voice my opinion sometimes, and, um, and also like um, having like full attention and listening fully. Mm -hmm. Did any of you take the opportunity to present a bill on the floor? And if so, or like present a bill and then it, did any of them make it to the floor? Um, or is that not something that happened this year? Yeah, at Boys Nation it's a pretty prevalent thing, but specifically at Boys State, um, I was part of the Senate for like three hours, so it was pretty quick. Um, but there was a couple, there was one on the school board. Um, it was a lot that you discussed about. Um, not a ton reached the floor given the time constraints, yep. but so you participate at least in my experience, you participate in a lot of um, debate on maybe a few bills, not a lot of bills. For example, there was one about school board and just student representation, what that should look like, if it should be required, compensation, etc. For me, I was an associate Supreme Court Justice, Ooh. so I wasn't necessarily on the floor of the Senate or the House um, a lot, but I did write a bill to be considered for Girls Nation, which was about um, public health in a time of a national emergency. So I'm not sure if it made it to the floor at all, but it was written as a national bill. Okay. Um, I did not write a bill. Okay. <laughs> I, I wrote a, a state bill, um, so it, uh, and I, I'm not sure if it reached the floor as I, um, I wasn't in the House or Senate either. Sure. Okay. Thanks. I have two questions. So how is your position chosen? Is that something you volunteer for or is it selected for you? And has this sparked an interest um, for you to participate in government in any way? <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> uh, for Boys State specifically, we went from city to county to um, state, of course. Uh, and at each one, you ran for something different. So at city, I went for a councilman, where you had to run a campaign, get elected. Then at county, I didn't go for a county position. I went to be a senator. So I got elected as that, and then as a state, we had to give a speech in front of the 200-some boys who were there, and then I was elected attorney general there sure. as well. Oh, and yeah, um, <laughs> uh, maybe I love, it was, it definitely sparked an interest. I never really thought about doing anything in the government, and now possibly, um, I don't think I would do anything specifically like, um, in the U.S., but I love to travel, so possibly international affairs, international relations, maybe become a diplomat. Um, so, Girl State was a bit different. You were allowed to be elected to multiple positions. We didn't have that. This is my first time hearing about this. We were allowed to run for one position. So, we had um, city positions, county positions, and state positions, and I knew I wanted to be a Supreme Court Justice, so I held out on it, and like every day I was like, ooh, do I like run for this, because otherwise I won't have a position. You just get put in the House or the Senate if you don't have a position by the end, 
So, but I got elected, so I had to campaign for that as well as make it through the primary voting and the top six of us, I believe, had to give a speech in front of like the 300 girls who were there. So it was pretty fun, in my opinion, but I enjoy stuff like that. Um, and then if you made it through, so three were chosen to be at Supreme Court justices. And I've always had an interest in politics. I've been helping with campaigns this summer for um, House of Representatives. And uh, along with Bonnie, I do want to go into a career in public health diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had to also campaign. I went for auditor. Ooh. And so, yeah, I had to go to all these girls' dorms at night and kind of hand them these cards and <laughs> try to get the other girls. I had to look my, like, make myself look good. It was stressful. You only had a much time. I was running down the hallways and just begging people. For that a girl. I was telling my whole life story. It was, it was a task, but I got it. So. <laughs> Um, so I, I went for a city level position, um, so my campaigning was a bit different. Instead of like going uh, door to door in the dorms at night, I, um, I talked individually with um, everyone in my city, so about like 20-ish people. And, um, and I, I, I was a, elected as a treasurer, the city treasurer, so. Um, and, uh, and in Girls' State, we, uh, we each had like different tasks assigned to uh, like our different positions, like for example, as a treasurer, I was in charge of collecting everybody's taxes, which <laughs> were uh, a quarter every day. <laughs> so, did either of you have any interest in working in government at all? Or? Um, or did it turn you off? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of work. Oh man, I was getting kind of tired. No, um, it definitely sparked an interest in me because I never had a big opinion on government, and now, like, I do find myself more interested in it, but I don't think I would ever pursue it. Sure. Um, I uh, I don't think I would ever pursue government either, but it did um, it did make me more aware of how meetings worked and uh, in campaigning and gave me like. Um, it, it just made me have a lot more respect for those in government positions. You know, you said you had to, one of the things, you had to walk in and you had, you had your own opinion and then you had to see the perspective of other. Did any of you change your mind or change your opinions after listening to everyone else? Did that ever happen? Um, okay, on like uh, topics I'm really passionate about, no. Okay. But on um, <laughs> topics that are very niche that I had no clue about, <laughs> maybe a little. I don't know. Okay. Like some like weird tax bills were introduced. So I was like, I don't know what's going on. That sounds right. So I'm gonna go Got it. <laughs> <laughs> In my opinion, one thing I did learn about politics is you need to have a certain image to get people to vote for you. So on some things, I changed visibly, but not internally until I got my position. Got it. I like that. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm basically the same as Lonnie. I was just kind of agreeing with everybody, and there's some things I would put, like poke my head in and just be like, oh, I don't know about that. But. Right. Okay. Um, I... I I also agree with Lonnie. I had some um, some opinions that I was pretty stuck on, but I, <laughs> I like I, I changed my mind after hearing different okay. people's takes and things. Did you think anybody was there that you could see like, oh, I'm going to be voting for that person someday? <laughs> Oh, yeah, our girl state governor, Toluca, she is the sweetest, most amazing person ever, and very passionate. Look at yeah. <laughs> she was the guy city. She was, oh my gosh, she's the most amazing person. She's so talented. Um, I still talk to her to this day. Yeah. I talk to my whole city to this day. That's awesome. Yeah. We all like Snapchat groups with each other, so. Yeah. Anyway, yes, I can see her definitely doing something. Oh, yeah. And I will vote for her. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you for representing Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to say their names one more time in case you guys see them one day and you have to vote for them. So you know who everybody is. So first we have Emma Kerber. And then... And then Lilia Larson. And Ella Hunkins. Thank you. And you can always dip your toe in the pot.
public field as a school board member. <laughs> <laughs> and just a side note, Ella did get nominated as first alternate for Girls Nation. Wow. Which, she did. Um, yeah. Congrats. 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 Yes, that's awesome. Thank you guys for coming. Somebody grab you. <laughs> All right, next up on the agenda, we have our. Yes, uh, you can yes, go. Yes, yeah. sorry. <laughs> You don't have to stay for the whole thing. <laughs> uh, next up on the agenda, we have our uh, Watertown Mayor Director of Buildings and Grounds, uh, Mr. Leesman. Come on up for introduction and updates. You're new to the world of Watertown Mayor. Thank you, school board and everybody. My name is Jeff Lisman. I'm a new building and grounds director here at uh, Watertown Mayor. It's been 63 days, and so far it's been pretty good. So we'll stick around for 64 more. So. Um, some of the some of the things that we've been going through, um, we all know about the parking lot project that we've been doing. Um, seems to be just pretty much done. Um, everything looks really good. Uh, there's a few things that we're going to fix up around. We got some sod. We got to fix up a little bit. Um, also, uh, just some a few areas that need to be that need to be cleaned up. So we'll get that get that handled. Um, some of the things, if we can go to that uh, if on the I have some computer there. Uh, one of the one of the things that um, I wanted to implement here that we've kind of started is this 24-25 project. This this is something that I wanted to do for all the schools. Um, this, this is anything pretty much big budget items that we, you know, I know we have long-term long -term facilities maintenance that we want to look at too, but these are things that, little things that I've seen within the, within the last few days or months that uh, I've been there. Some things have been completed, some things need to be looked at and uh, prioritized. And um, I've shared this with pretty much all the principals and anybody who, who wants to, is they can put stuff in there uh, into their school that they want to, that they want to add. Um, but sometimes it's a bigger budget item. If it's a smaller one, then this is something that we, you know, that we just do in house. But most most of the stuff is something that we have to have, you know, somebody come in and take a look at. So this is shared, like I said, shared with all the principals, and uh, um, and we can actually share it with the school board so you guys can look at it anytime you want and see what's kind of going on. Uh, next on the list then is the custodial audit reports. This is something that I I've, I've come up with years ago. Um, this is something that I do with our custodians monthly on a monthly basis. I go through, I check their rooms, and make sure everything is, is looking good. And this is different different things that we look at, and I give them a give them a score. And if it if it's something that I see that hey, you know what, our standards going to be a little bit higher than it used to be, um, it's something we work on. Uh, I, I presented this to the uh, to my team on on last Friday, and they all thought it was a great idea. So hopefully we can uh, implement it, and it, it kind of helps out too. That if it's something that we see that's it's a trend that's kind of going downward, we can start doing maybe more more than once a month. We can look at it weekly, you know, every two weeks or something to kind of help them out to make sure we're getting the best that we can. And uh, my 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 standards for you know cleanliness and things are probably a little bit higher than than most, but um, I'm not going to apologize for that. So. <laughs> And then the other thing I just want to talk about a little bit is we have, you know, all of our contracts and bids. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of contracts out there. And at some point, um, when I get through reading them all and seeing what's, <laughs> what's all out there, there might be times where we need to look at not only the contract we have, but, but looking at getting other bids and other quotes for the, for the same work being done. I just want to, you know, make sure we keep everybody honest so they don't think that they can take advantage of us as, as a school system. And, you know, I think sometimes, and they know that you're, you're out there looking at other at other people too. Sometimes they, they give you a good deal too. Um, our work order system, uh, the the one we have is is good. We don't utilize it on the facility side as much as we should. And I'm working with, with Dustin and John in the IT, um, to bring this up to speed and make it, make it very user friendly for everybody that's in the building and, and that can use it and also user-friendly for us in the maintenance group so that we can keep track of our assets, keep better track of our um, preventive maintenance that we need to do on a monthly, weekly, or yearly basis. And this is going to really help. Once we utilize it, we pay for it, 
we're going to utilize it the best we can. And so far, it's it's, it's going to go real good. So, uh, and the last thing is something I'm kind of proud that we did. We actually figured and got it uh, locked down today. Our mail route that we do um, was in the past has been done with a couple of my team members at the CLC and at the elementary school. We have now. Um, have an arrangement with Transitions Plus, the, the Transition 18, they're going to be actually doing our mail route, which I think is going to be a great thing for them. Also for us, it, it kind of frees up my team a little bit, and it gives them a, some responsibility and get out in the community and, and help out there. So something I'm kind of proud that they were able to help us out with. So, yeah. Other than that, any questions? I like it. Oh, that good. good. I'm I'm impressed so Thank far yeah, with, like with all the different changes. Um, you know, why don't you give us a 30,000 foot view of your background? I don't know if the board knows your background, where you came from. Uh, well, I started my maintenance career on the farm as a kid. You know, you grew up on the farm, you learn real quick how to fix things. <laughs> Whether it's using, you know, baler twine or whatever, you learn how to do it. And you got grandpa and dad to teach you all that. <laughs> um, I worked at Hutchinson Hospital for almost 20 years, was there for, for a long time, and then I always knew that I wanted to be in the director role at some point, and it ended up that um, the hospital we were city owned, we ended up getting bought out by Alina, and they had to do a lot of cuts, and I was one that we were, a bunch of us were cut, you know, that were non-patient care. From there, I went to the Hutchinson School District and was there for quite a few years, and there again, I knew I knew I wanted to be a, a director at some point, and um, my boss there was very implementing, um, instrumental in helping me implement what I wanted to do and what I wanted to, to become there. So, and then in the last year here, I was at uh, Mount Westanka as their facility director, and decided I wanted something better, and here I am. So, <laughs> thank you all for. Woohoo! For bringing me well, on board. I, and so. I think you walked into a pretty good situation after all the bond. Yep. Our facilities are in good, yep. good shape yep. for you. Yep. We have a great crew. We have a great administration team. So it's been great so far. So thank you very much. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, next up is Ms. Stray. Is that? Stray. Um, the deputy director from the Carver County CDA. And you have a presentation. So thank you for being patient. Yes, good evening. Hi, yes, um, Allison Strike, I'm the Deputy Director for Carver County CDA. Um, if you are not familiar with the CDA, the mission of the CDA is to provide affordable housing opportunities and foster community and economic development for the cities within Carver County. Um, so we do affordable housing, affordable and subsidized housing. So we have just under 800 units of affordable and subsidized rental housing that we own and manage throughout the county. Um, I just closed on a new 60-unit project that will break ground this week in the city of Carver. Um, and we'll be bringing another 43 units online in the next couple of months in that city as well. Um, and then we do a lot of community development work. So if you're not familiar with Choose Carver County, great website. Promotes all the cities and the chambers within the county. Um, and then we have a land trust program, which is an affordable home ownership program. Um, and some other uh, home ownership type programs that we do in our community development area. So we did an updated uh, comprehensive housing study needs analysis in 2024. The impetus for that was the last time Maxfeld Research did a, a countywide housing study for us was in 2014. Um, in 2017, we did some city updates using another provider, um, and that really was to help the cities write their 2040 comp plans. So uh, fast forward to 2024, um, it had been 10 years since we'd done a countywide, countywide housing study. Um, our agency is in the middle of our 2024 to 2027 strategic planning process, so it was going to help us sort of guide what we were going to be doing. Um, and then the county is required to do a community health assessment every five years, and out of that community health assessment comes what's called a CHIP or a community health improvement plan. Um, and we are in the process of finishing the community health assessment to implement the next community health improvement plan. And so this will also have an impact on some of the goals in that. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to plug you in. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> that was my fault. And that should say, sorry, Watertown and Mayor data. 
Um, so when our community truly supports abundant housing options, we all benefit. So children have their grandparents, schools have skilled teachers, music halls have bands, coffee shops have customers, factories have workers, college grads can come home, entrepreneurs take chances, and young families can build a future. There we go. So this is just a snapshot, and I say a snapshot. This document is on our website if anybody is interested in reading it, but it's like 340 pages <laughs> long. So I've no. sort of picked out some of the things um, based on Darren attending the Watertown Chamber meeting um, and some of the other presentations I've done on information that people found helpful. Um, so the home ownership rate among Watertown, um, and when I say submarket, so um, Maxville divided the county into nine submarkets. So there's a couple cities that are grouped together, um, and Mayor New Germany is one of them. And then um, all of them have townships associated with them. Um, so the home ownership rate among the Watertown submarket is 90.7% and 92% in the Mayor New Germany submarket. The median home value is 273,615 in the Watertown submarket and 293,867 in the Mayor New Germany. Watertown saw the largest increase in the county in the median sale, median resale price for multifamily, so that's row, um, row homes or townhouses units, at a 72% increase since 2017. Um, and the median household income in Watertown in 2023 is 89,104. In Mayor New Germany, it's 88,135, and that's compared to the county median of 106,058. Um, this just lists out some of the major employers, both within the Watertown and the mayor. Um, this specific one, uh, they had a separate slide for New Germany, so for mayor, it, it is just specific to mayor. Um, but you can see that your school district is the, bigger the biggest employer in both cities. Um, so this chart summarizes housing affordability, so both by rental and the for sale and for sale housing. So based on an average weekly wa wage for each submarket compared to the median contract rent and the resale price for detached. So this one is specific to detached single family homes. Um, so that you can see in Watertown, an average week, we the average weekly wage at eight hundred fifty seven dollars. That pers that household can affor afford a rent at one thousand one hundred fourteen. And this is telling you the median contract rent in Watertown is $766. Um, I will tell you that Watertown predominantly, the bulk of your rental um, market is USDA housing. That's all subsidized, and that is why your contract rent, um, your median rent is so low. Okay. Um, huh. And uh, somebody making $857 as an average weekly wage huh. could afford a house at $131,700. And the 23, 2023 median res resale price in Watertown was 370500 So home ownership is, not, is out of reach for that average weekly wage earner. Um, and in the mayor, New Germany, average weekly wage, 879 can afford a, a, a median rent of 1143 The median contract rent's 860 Again, that's skewed. There's very little rental in mayor. And um, the one property that we own is also USDA rural development. Um, they could own, uh, purchase a house at 149400 and the 2023 median resale price was 300000 um, So this slide shows the median contract rent by the submarket um, within the county. So based on uh, an allocation, 30% allocation of income to housing, so that's what we consider um, that a household should not spend more than 30% of their income on housing. Um, so when you own a home, that includes your mortgage, your insurance, your taxes, um, and if you have any HOA dues. When you rent, generally it's, and generally it's talking about um, your rent and utilities. Um, household incomes would need to range from 20,776 in Cologne to 65,897 in Victoria. Um, so you can see in the Hamburg, Norwich, no, sorry, Mayor New Germany, you would need an income of 34,402 to afford the median rent, and in Watertown, an income of 30648 Well, those are based on the median rent, not necessarily what's available either, right? Well, the median rent is based on what's available. What exists or what's available for rent, I guess is what I'm asking. Um, if all, if all the one, places are rented. They would be looking at what's available. Okay. Not to rent, I'm sorry, what exists. So they literally would contact all the apartment complexes. They have a separate 
um, chart in their um, in the the full study that actually will show you then what the actual vacancy rates are at each property. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this is median list prices by submarket. Um, so the top in the blue is detached single family homes. So you can see in Mayor New Germany, um, the median list price is 402,000 in Watertown, it's 392. And then the multifamily, that's specific, still for sale, but that would be like townhouses and row houses. Um, so Watertown is 299.9, and Mayor New Germany is 397,000. Um, so this just talks about median resale prices for multifamily, and again, that's specific to townhouses and row houses. Um, so highest in Victoria and Carver, um, strong price appreciation incurred in every submarket, but again, the Watertown submarket experienced the largest increase um, as the price jumped 72% between 2017 and 2023. This just shows annual, um, average annual housing units permitted by submarket to get a feel for um, between 2010 and 2022 what's been permitted uh, by city. <laughs> Um, so in Watertown, um, a total of 25, and Mayor New Germany as well, 25. And that's average annual. And so for, from this graph, it looks like it's, you know, Chanhassen, Chaska, and then as you move further west, you have Victoria, then Waconia. Mm -hmm. Do you, does the study get into sort of future growth, or yes. is this, okay. So this, it's, it, it looks back and then it uses back to also to help project, project forward. forward between, it projects 2022, 2023 to 2030 and then 2023 to 2040. Okay. So this, this, so here's part of their projection. So this is the 20, I added 2023 to 2024 demand growth specific to Watertown. So this study um, calls out a need for 1,292 general occupancy units. Um, and of those, they're saying 1,100 should be for sale, um, 770 should be single family detached, 330 should be the multifamily, and that's like the townhouses and the row houses. And then of that total 1,292, that 192 should be rental, 55 of them should be subsidized, and that's where there's um, an income limit, and then the household pays 30% of their income, and the rest of their rent is subsidized, typically by the federal or the state government. Um, 45 of those should be affordable, so that's where there is still income restricted, but where they don't pay 30% of their income, they just pay the full rent, but it's restricted on what the rent amount can be. Um, and then 92 market rate. And for Mayor New Germany, they're saying 1,040 general occupancy units with 952 for sale, um, 809 of those being single family detached and 143 multifamily. And then 88 rental um, with 19 subsidized, 29 affordable and 40 market rate. And so is there, I don't think you had any of your presentation, but on the, on the larger presentation, is there sort of a comparison between like for this this slide, Mayor New Germany, it's 1,040 general occupancy, but currently they're at 800. Yeah. You know, a comparison between the two, so yeah, you can. Yeah, it tells you where they are right now and then okay. where they think they. Sh it actually breaks it down based on where they are right now, what they think should be added between 2023 and 2030, and then what should be added between 2030 and 2040. Okay. I just condensed it into. 2023 to 20. It's a lot of 300 pages. There's a lot to condense in 10 slides. Yes. So. In general, how far <laughs> off are we? I mean, uh, for Watertown and or Mayor New Germany, if Mayor um, New Germany needs 1,040, where are they at now? No, so this is what they're saying you need between 2023 and 2040. The next 17 years. Yeah. That's, That's what we have to do. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you just um, want to know if they're if we're, we're, close yeah. right yeah. now. Well, yeah, what well, I'm looking yeah. at is where are we at today, and then if we're doing 25 a year, are we going to get here? Mm. You know? Yeah. If that's our average, 25 homes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they even go into like again so much more detail about what's a lot like what our lots are available like and there there we don't have enough no city in the county has enough lots ready to meet the demand huh. and so they look at lots that are like platted and ready to go versus that aren't you know they break it down into three different categories but regardless of how you look at it there's still a deficit um, on lots for for sale. 
Hmm. I think that's the last one. I'm happy to take questions. No, I, I definitely appreciate this. You know, it, it's one of the things where we're seeing a, you know, a decline in our student enrollment. So we're trying to work with our cities to try to figure out creative ideas, uh, working partnerships to try to grow our communities, grow the school district. So I think this is something that, you know, hopefully you do get consider, you know, to the city council, you know, of Watertown and of mayor to kind of give these presentations too, just so we can all work on the same playbook. Yeah. yeah, and so when we go to the cities, we do um, a little bit different from this because um, the housing study does uh, have examples of what cities can do to try to, I oh. mean, from a CDA perspective, more so like get some of the affordable stuff, but yeah. even just the develop, just even like for sale units, like there's different things cities can implement, like at a, like a city zoning level that they can do. Oh. Um, you know, we've got, a, our, like I said, our land trust program. Um, so with land trust, the purchase, the land comes out of the purchase price of the house, um, and we put it in a 99-year renewable ground lease, so the homeowner only buys a mortgage on the house, so that we can target households at 80% of area median income or below. So that's one way for us to help, like, get homeowners like into a community that might otherwise not be able to afford it. Um, and then we've got some other funding that's coming from the state that's called the local affordable housing aid that we'll, we're going to be able to do. Um, some first time and some first gen uh, down payment assistance programs too that might be able to help again households yeah. that might not otherwise be able to afford to live in a community get into that community. That was another point too that brought us to you know more attention is we've had a number of teachers that can't find market rate in housing in our community and they're they're moving to other communities around us because whether it be an apartment complex you know multifamily. Um, even single fam, we're just having a hard time finding those folks uh, housing within their price range. So, so it's a big issue. We're excited to launch some of our funding, you know, funding opportunities that might be able to help somebody, you know, get into a community. Absolutely. If that, you know, just because of the down payment assistance mm -hmm. option. Mm -hmm. And anything else? This is good. Oh, great. Yeah. And if you're interested, the full 300 and something <laughs> page document is pinned on uh, carvercda.org is our website. Uh, we have it, it's a news story, but we have it pinned to the front page. Um, there is obviously an executive summary in the front and like the conclusions and recommendations in the back. If you don't want to read all of the <laughs> you can kind of get the high level at the front and the end of the report. Jim will read it for us. Thanks again, Allison. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you with us. Appreciate it. We'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Moving right along, um, our first action item is the acknowledgement of donation, contributions, and fundraising. Mr. Schuler. All right, Mr. Chair, tonight uh, we have another a number of donors we're going to recognize for their contributions. Uh, the Wiretown Lions to Wiretown Mayor Community Ed Summer Youth Theater for $5,000 support their budget, supplies, and materials. Uh, Allison Jeff Nathan for Summer Youth Theater as well for $100. Um, Melissa from Back Channel um, to Gymnastics for $230. Mac and Tunes uh, Foods, uh, Gymnastics also for $300. Mr. Sanders uh, of Gymnastics for $1,000. Nathan Sanders uh, for Gymnastics for $500. And those, those are all leotard purchases. Wiretown American Legion uh, Industrial Tech for $2,500 to get a new inverted router. Uh, the City of Watertown to Watertown Mayor Community Ed for $1,900 for um, community-based programming. Uh, Mayor Area Lions Club Robotics Program, $500 for parts. And then anonymous donor to Boys Basketball for $1,928.58 wow. <laughs> to purchase an alternate jersey. The exact amount. I write. <laughs> to the penny. They wanted the fancier jersey. Was that? Yeah. Well, Apparently, I'm interested to see what that. I mean, I'm men, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the city look jersey. We need there pictures. Go. The city. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they have a hole in a way. I make do. a motion to approve Red. the donation and contributions. Second. Have a motion made by Ms. Danielson, seconded by Mr. Burns. Any further discussions on the donations? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries, and thank you to all of our donors this month. 
be greatly appreciated. Um, item B, the second readings of district policies requiring review. Mr. Schuler. Hi, Mr. Chair. Um, we have the second reading of our uh, policy review from um, last month, and these are the ones that were vetted out. Um, and additionally, if you remember uh, when we talked back in July, uh, a lot of our administrators were on their summer break, so when they came back, we were able to kind of put these uh, in a better place. So uh, with that being said, we're asking the board, and also I should add that the policy committee has met a couple of times, I think for sure, um, to, to kind of work through these. Um, again, we have uh, one more additional policy we're bringing back hopefully next month uh, in regards to Title IX that didn't make this cut. Um, still looking through some legal um, um, pieces on there for commentary, um, but um, right now we're asking for approval. And I remember we kind of did a second read on some of these to get admin review on them. I'm assuming they've reviewed it, the policy committee's reviewed it, and we're all in agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Approval. Second. Motion made by Mr. O'Neill, seconded by Mr. Burns. Any further discussions on the second reads of the policies? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item C, the 24-25 superintendent goals. Mr. Schuler. Hi, Mr. Chair and Board, I just wanted to give a high-level overview of some of my goals this year. Um, I'll have, I have four goals that I'll be working towards and some action items attached to those, but this is more of a high-level view of some of those areas. Uh, goal one is just to continue to market um, our, our schools and our strategic growth. Um, and again, that kind of fits with our strategic commitment of communication and partnerships. Um, our second goal will focus more on developing a budget adjustment process and um, long-term facility needs plan. Um, kind of excited to work with Mr. Leesman on some of the work that needs to be done there and uh, putting that together. Uh, that will be one of my goals and that falls in line with the uh, commitment of final financial stewardship. Excuse me. Um, goal three um, is, is that continuation of the MTSS plan in year four. Um, we're kind of looking at this as a five-year plan. This would be our fourth year. And again, um, it's taking that to that next level. And then goal four um, is just going back and um, retaking some of the MBA, um, MSBA phase training. I took those all in my first year of superintendent, kind of due for a refresh uh, to go through those training. And they recommended every three to four years will be my fifth year, so it's time to go back. Um, one area also I, I'd like to add was just the area of legislative platform design. Uh, Mr. Felt and I have been working uh, a little bit more uh, with the legislature and MSBA in terms of developing our, our own Wartel Mayor legislative platform and bringing some things forward. And I think our next agenda item, next agenda item speaks to that a little bit also. Um, so I'm working with him on that. And then our strategic commitment there would be again under that financial stewardship piece. So. High level. And then underneath these, there's more specific commitments, but mm -hmm. this is that high level review. I shared that with the personnel uh, committee as well, and just giving an amount of update on where I'm at with that. So, questions? Make a motion to approve uh, the 2024 25 superintendent goals. Second. Motion made by Ms. Danielson, seconded by Ms. Nathan. Uh, any further discussion on the goals for this upcoming year? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Next up. Oh, sorry. Just a yeah. question. When do we get updated on those? Is that quarterly? Do we do that? Or is that mm -hmm. when? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I just couldn't remember. Mm -hmm. right. um, item D the approval of the Watertown Mayor Employee Handbook. Mr. Schuler. Uh, Mr. Chair and Board, we are bringing forth the uh, district handbook. Uh, this is all staff handbook. Uh, you can see it's in draft form as we speak. Uh, once you approve it tonight, we will move that to its final form. Now, when I say final, um, as we do a lot of our handbooks, there are certain things within the index or other areas that just need to be cleaned up. But our hope is to share this with staff this week while they're here for their professional development week and um, let them peruse that. There are certain aspects of the handbook that they need to sign off on. Um, we'll have that process completed as well, or where they have agreed um, that they have reviewed the, the said policies, um, reviewed 
everything within the Paul in the handbook. Um, it's pretty thorough. I want to just again um, really thank uh, Lisa Rader, uh, Cindy Eiten, and and Heather, especially in our district office staff for working on this. It's been about a two-year project. Um, it's finally longer. I can't. Oh, okay. I thought you said Lisa's been wanting to do it for many, many years. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and a little history there. For to our knowledge, I know some of our principals have waited. It's been a it's been at least over ten years since we've had an all district handbook, if you will. So it, it'd be, it's just, we felt it was time uh, to put this all in one document to refer to, uh, and that any employee can look at that and um, you know, be confident that this information is, is relevant and what they need. Um, so uh, we're excited to, to release it this week. Um, so is, is the plan to move forward with this sort of on a regular annual review cadence, maybe with the school handbooks too, just to kind of get on that regular? Cadence. Probably one hurt. Yeah, I guess we didn't decide <laughs> that, in, but it would make sense to do it on an annual All basis. Yeah, together. obviously it's a working document. Um, there'll be updates. As you can see down below, there is a whole section on policy, which all staff are required to review. So um, the annual review. So um, again, uh, we think we think this could be a, an ongoing approval process. And and selfishly, selfish plug: the committees aren't filled out. Completely for the, the board committee. Yep, I'm, I'm aware. Okay. But uh, I'll make a motion to approve the Watertown Mayor Employee Handbook. Second. Motion made by Mr. Felt, seconded by Mr. Burns. Any further discussion on the handbook? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Great job. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, next up is item E, proposal of upcoming resolution to the MSBA Delegate Assembly. All right, now you guys got to listen to me. <laughs> um, so as, as Mr. Schuler mentioned, um, we've been in contact with the legislative um, bodies at MSBA. There's, there's two ladies that once the legislative session comes, that's all they do. They go down there, they lobby for public education. Um, part of their process is, is very grassroots, right? They take all the school board information, input from all school boards, bring it to the MSBA board, uh, all these resolutions. They'll approve them or deny them, the MSBA board will. And then at that point, it goes to what's called the delegate assembly. I'm learning all this on the fly, too. Um, that's something that, as a district, we've never really been a part of. But uh, with my role as MSBA, I'm learning it on the fly. And this delegate assembly, it's, it's, I think there's a, all the 130 districts are there. It's about 160, 180 people all get into a room by their district directors or by their district groups. And they talk about all these resolutions. At the end of it, they vote them all. And at the end of it, that's MSBA's position. Um, a lot of them don't change, you know, year over year fully funding schools. Okay, that's always going to be on the list. That's kind of the, the pipe dream, right? <laughs> um, but the government relations team will then go with their top five or so priorities, 10 priorities, and then go and attend all those meetings, attending all those uh, hearings and meeting with uh, the different legislators that are on those committees. Um, the first step in that process is for school boards to do a resolution. And in, in talking to them, one of the areas that me and Darren kind of talked about as, as we were meeting with them was the declining enrollment, right? How do we try to keep our good staff, our staffing levels, our opportunities and connections to our staffs in a declining enrollment? Um, so the resolution that I created and in, in bringing forward to you guys um, and, and bringing it forward to you guys to, it's just meaning we can go on that next step to submit it to MSBA. Okay. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of wording changes between here and there, but the concept, the thought process behind it, um, it is trying to figure out how to best manage that declining enrollment. So my idea was you know, some sort of a, a rolling cycle. You know, your three year prior to declining enrollment funding and your three year of declining enrollment, kind of bringing it back to try to level that significant drop off. I think what Darren we had 
30 student drop off this year. Mm -hmm. In a district our size, that's, that's a lot of funding. You know, if you can try to smooth that out a little bit more and still provide those students with all the support that they need and the opportunities to take those courses that we might have to cut otherwise, um, that is sort of the, the impetus of this. And I, I talk about Watertown Mayor, but really it, it's bigger. It's Minnesota-wide. It's, it's small districts our size where 10, 20 students makes a huge difference in the budget. <coughs> So with that, I know Darren's got the, the draft of the resolution up there. And again, one of the things we needed was just you board approval. They implemented that this year because prior years they've seen other board members just randomly submit things that are really extremes. So now they want to make sure that the whole board is at least aware, aware. of and in agreement with sort of that next step. So not sure what the next step couple steps look like, but again, this is sort of what I wanted to bring to the board to, to bring to the MSBA. There's a September 23rd deadline to mm -hmm. submit this to yep. MSBA and to the delegate um, group, so I think trying to get ahead of that a little bit would be good. Um, and also some supporting data we will be including yeah, in there too to kind of tell our story at Watertown Mayor, kind of where we're at and where we're headed. So. Um, and to, uh, I put him in charge of that. And Kurt Schneewen is the one who uh, is the executive director of MSBA, and, and he said there'll be other districts he thinks will have similar platforms, so we probably won't be a standalone either, which is good. I mean, that hopefully will rise to the top um, in their decision-making process and definitely keep people informed. I get this is like the first run-through. We approve yeah. it. We'll still get to see the final with the data. I mean, yeah. even though it's yeah, already I approved. Definitely yeah. for awesome. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure that. Mm -hmm. But we just kind of wanted to make sure yep. we went, did that process yep. timely. So we do need a motion and a second if you guys actually want to move this. Board. I'll make the motion to approve the resolution to MSBA. Second. Wow. Yeah, you are. He's hearing the thunder. Um, <laughs> have a motion made by Ms. Nathan, seconded by Mr. Burns. Uh, any further discussion on my resolution? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. And I'm not sure, Heather, if I can yeah. vote on that or not. But um, regardless, we have a. You should be able to. Yeah. 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 I would think so. I would think so too, but just trying to make sure we're on the up and up. <laughs> yeah. Great job on it. There's still four of y'all. This is good stuff. This is really good to get this out there. So. And if you have other comments, concerns, away. wording changes, definitely you know, let me and Darren know. All right, that ends the action items of the night. Moving on to review items, uh, project updates. Mr. Schuler. Yeah, I'll be real brief this evening um, on our uh, abatement bond parking lot projects. Um, we're kind of in that spot where we're, we're done with most of the work. Um, we have still the CLC work to be completed and the uh, parking lot, the additional parking lot at the high school. Uh, we did receive some word today that um, delivery week um, could be pushed back a little bit, but they're still planning on, uh, this is the materials, uh, the structures, and to, uh, starting the week of the 9th now. So that's a week off from what we had hoped for. I communicated that to Ms. Dimler today at the CLC because they're the most impacted. But Hey. All right, well, it looks like they're sorting themselves out. Uh, but to continue on, um, uh, that work is, um, again, looking at the 9th. Um, we are hoping that that lower lot is done for homecoming. If it does not get done, they are prepared to make it a gravel lot to help with homecoming parking, as we've talked about. Um, finishing touches, some other things. We have a flagpole at the, at the district office that needs to be wrapped up. Um, railing at the high school, we have a temporary railing right now. Um, and then some signage would be going up as well this week. Um, gate at the elementary, the sleeves for that um, could be completed this week, I'm hearing. Uh, and then we might see some ball field uh, fencing starting um, this week as well. So some of that um, CLC lower level um, ball field, uh, start getting that put back together. So um, those are some big ones. Um, Again, I think for the most part, welcoming students and staff back this week and next week, uh, we're in really good shape. So 
It's exciting. And we're also waiting on ICS and our and Lisa to just double check and align the budgets, just to make sure where we're where we're sitting and if we can accomplish more, we'll accomplish more. Well, one other item too: the elementary and the high school um, punch list items from CRC, our friends at CRC, has been now completed. So we are now officially done. Done. Oh. Done. Oh. done. <laughs> wow! Don't you get champagne? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's like with the saber kind of right, yeah. <laughs> elementary high school um, punch list items. Yeah. Still Sorry. middle school. And middle school flooring, yes, was okay. also okay. completed a part of that. Okay. Yes, thank you. Any other That's all I have. Any other questions? All right, moving on to item B, which is the 2324 superintendent uh, evaluation summary. So I got a statement. Uh, we'd kind of do it annually. Um, we are pleased to share that the Watertown Mayor Board of Education, alongside Superintendent Schuler, recently completed the annual review process during July's closed meeting of the board. Yes, I'm reading it. <laughs> I didn't memorize this, Lisa. Come on. <laughs> As part of the annual process, we reviewed the goals approved by the board for the 23-24 school year. Superintendent Schuler's performance was evaluated based on these four key goals, as well as his overall leadership within the district. The board was particularly impressed with Superintendent Schuler's management of the strategic roadmap process and successful implementation of year two of the MTSS initiative. Furthermore, we greatly appreciate the strides he, had, he has made in enhancing communications and fostering positive interactions not only with us as a board and staff, but also within our broader communities. Our consensus is that Superintendent Schuler is doing an effective job in leading the district. And we, the Watertown Mayor Board of Education, remain supportive of Superintendent Schuler's continued, continued development and leadership of our school district. So thank you, Darren, for your continuing uh, efforts and your ongoing support and dedication to our district and your former district. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, all right, that's off the plate now. <laughs> Item C, Superintendent Schuler, the update on your strategic directions, the vision card. Yeah, this. Um, now, you don't have TVs behind you. Oh, yeah, what happened? Sorry. Well, with the power uh, went out, everything got. Well, this, yeah, we'll just have to uh, hunt a little bit. So, what I was going to just bring to the board's attention tonight in the fact that we did uh, recently complete our vision card um, for last school year. Um, Coming back up. Let's oh, see an airplane. There we go. There we go. I didn't go. Yeah, go. Um, there it is. Uh, once again, uh, we use our strategic uh, plan vision card to kind of outline our um, how we've done in terms of each of our strategic directions. As you can see, um, this is for 24-25, but it reflects the 23-24 school year um, data. So um, again, our strategic directions are on the left-hand side. Um, the, the specific uh, measure that we're using is in the red um, along the side there. And then, of course, on the, uh, the middle section, the description describes the actual goal that was accomplished. And then on the uh, levels, uh, we have the four different levels, um, and you can see how those are uh, listed above. Um, again, uh, I think we're, we're very excited in the, in the fact that we continue to grow in, in most areas uh, or stay steady. I don't think we really declined in any areas, um, which was, was exciting. You know, and I think we talked about some of the areas that we want to really work on. Uh, one of the things is the student survey uh, question where um, percent of students who agreed or strongly agreed with a statement, I feel seen, valued, and heard at school. Uh, you know, we're going to do some digger, deep, uh, deeper digging on that just to see, again, what, what are students thinking, saying, feeling um, when, they, when they rate that a little bit lower. Again, we are right around 84% there. Um, but an area we want to uh, continue to improve on. Um, on the flip side, again, I think on a highlight, uh, if you go to the top one, students who uh, agreed or strongly agreed with the statement, I have at least one classmate that cares about me and wants me to succeed. You know, again, we're in that 97 percentile, I believe. So some really cool things happening there. Um, again, as you scroll down a little bit further, um, 
some of our staff piece too. We've talked about that, I think, in our last meeting, um, where staff um, feeling supported in my current role, a little lower than we'd like to see. So that was an area that we're going to try to address as well um, at each of our buildings. One of the areas to uh, continue on um, in reading, uh, again, this is for second grade through eighth grade students on the on-track category as measured by FASTBRIDGE. So in the spring, we take our FAST tests. So right now, we're right at about 49%, just didn't quite make it to 50, are on, considered on track to pass um, the MCAs. So that is one that we know we need to continue to improve on. Um, we don't include kindergarten and first grade with that because they actually have a different type of assessment within FAST that doesn't quite measure it the same way where we see some phenomenal growth in K and one, it's just a little bit different in uh, grades two through eight. So those are areas that we're gonna continue to work on. So again, we have a FAST goal, an MCA goal, uh, another math FAST goal, and a an math MCA goal. Uh, we had our graduation um, goal, and again, you know, that 97, 98%, I think last year uh, there, um, how many students uh, graduate with college credits, um, again, you know, 94 to 96% of our kids um, have um, some graduate credits as they leave um, Watertown Mayor. Um, Mr. Hedden does an exit survey every year, and again, I feel prepared to take the next step in my life after graduation. Um, we're getting that 90 to 94%, so some really high ratings there, which is exciting. Um, this core advantage piece, all children are ready for kindergarten. We kind of combine our preschool data along with one kindergarten data point, and you can see how our young royals are doing in terms of being uh, on track or considered low risk and uh, well above in the 75 percentile in that uh, young royals program. Um, Oh, and by the way, SEL is social emotional learning, just in case that one uh, pops up, we do measure that as well. And then kindergarten too, I know we talked a little bit about that probably last time, but just some phenomenal growth uh, this past year in kindergarten. So again, percent of kindergarten students in the low risk category as measured by FastBridge assessment. So um, again, most of our kids, almost 80% are, are uh, not at risk, essentially. They're in the low risk um, as far as their benchmark. So pretty exciting. Um, and then finally, just some parent satisfaction survey results we post in our vision card, and that is uh, percentage of parents who agreed, strongly agreed, that, again, we're proud to have a child in the district, you know, that 90, 94 percentile. Um, and then again, um, teacher, staff, and administration in the district uh, generally care about my child, and that's still in that 90 to 94 percentile. So we always encourage, again, uh, community members to take a look at this. Again, this is a great way to see how we're doing. And again, we're gonna continue to look at this. Is the vision card the best way to, to show how we're doing? Uh, we've seen a number of other, you know, different ways to show that. Um, this one doesn't show comparisons to the previous year. So we've had some talk about that. What could we be doing to, to do that? Um, but this is year two um, data that uh, we'll report back on. So, and, and as a as a district, do we have goals, or is that something we should come up with as a board? So let's say the student survey is eighty four percent and below. Mm -hmm. You know, what is the, is our district goal ninety two? Is it sixty three? You know, what what is our specific goal that we're shooting to? Obviously, you want one hundred percent, but that's not. That's not mm -hmm. realistic in, yeah. in almost all of these categories. Yep. We should have some simple, measurable, yeah. where, where we want to be, and if we're or above it, fantastic. Maybe what growth? Like, do we mm -hmm. want to see a 5% growth? Mm -hmm. or a... We had this discussion the other day, and I think most of the time, 3% seems to be the, the yeah. goal point that you're, you're looking for in terms of percentages. So but then as you get closer to 100, that's going to get lost. It's, it's yeah. going to get shorter, but to yeah, yep. Um, we're working on three other district-wide goals uh, as well this year that I'll have like about three-point growth measures, um, three percentage points. So um, that's kind of been our standard that we've okay. been using typically. So. Now, would it make sense to tweak the levels so that say level three is our goal and then level four is the stretch? Is the stretch part of it? Yeah. yeah. Then at least it's like, okay, if we're all in level three or above, 
That's where, where we want to mm -hmm. be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want to be too far. The other thing that I think we could look at adding would be to indicate which direction we're going. So yep. did we improve from oh, last time yes. or not? Yeah. Even just a, a yep. green dot or a red yep. dot or an arrow or something. Yeah. We even looked at a, like a speedometer model that shows where you were last year with the point and where you went to this year and in between is kind of that green area, if you will. So, yeah, I think this will probably get a revision, um, you know, going into next year. But um, it's, a good point. it's a good starting point. Yeah, is again, I, and I'm excited. I, like we've talked a lot about this administrative. We've never really measured ourselves, so to speak, and. Um, this is one way to, again, go back out to the community and say, hey, we're doing pretty well. Yeah, there's areas we need to improve, and it's yeah. certainly documented in there as well. But um, I guess it, it gives us that where we want to go um, mentality. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, since it is almost back to school, we have all of our admin reports coming. So starting it off with Mr. Hennon. Good evening. Uh, today was a good first day back with the staff. Uh, you know, I think it, just, it was it was unusual because usually we always have the back to school stuff in the PAC and we didn't, so a lot of staff were coming. It was different, but I think they kind of enjoyed just the time to, you know, again, staff culture. It's nice that they can actually have chances to talk with each other and catch up. And, and again, just kind of, even for me, just to go around and be able to have a chance to talk with everybody. It was a good first day back. Um, Wednesday night we have our ninth grade orientation. And we'll do it similar in the past where they get chances to tour the building, but then we have a chance where we meet with the parents and the students together. And then we send the kids off to follow the first uh, quarter schedule. And then we meet with the parents as well and answer questions. And again, it's usually a really highly attended event, and we've had good feedback in the past. It just calms a lot of nerves just to that first day when <coughs> they go open their lockers and all that good stuff and get to see other teachers. And I think the teachers said they actually like it too because they get up. They get, you know, five minutes with their kids. So that first day is not as kind of overcome some of that, that first day awkwardness. Um, two new staff to the, to the high school. Emily Victory is teaching art. She's doing one block a day. Uh, Emily does some local work in, in down on Watertown. And she does some things I think through the community. It would be an awesome addition to the art program. And then Anna Palman is our new high school counselor. And then lastly, I just want to publicly thank the custodial staff. Uh, high school's a, kind of a weird building in the summer because we don't ever seem to not have like kids or teams or programs in, and, and I just give them a lot of credit. They always work around us, and I appreciate that a lot because, again, it's a pretty busy building, and our facilities look great, and just want to thank them for, again, their flexibility and everything they do. So, Any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gerton. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we really kind of started things off on August 21st. We had our fifth grade orientation, went really smoothly. Uh, that morning was mentors coming in to work with fifth graders, our eighth grade mentorship team. Our mentorship group of kids came in, and it was just a very smooth uh, day from that point on. Our kids were really happy. Parents were very positive about coming in and their kids being able to show them around, so that went real smoothly. Uh, today went really well. Um, some of those systems that we started talking about with MTSS four years ago, now we're starting to see the benefit of those systems coming into play. So, um, which also kind of led to um, the structuring of goals that we're working on that are connected with district alignment and strategic planning. So, just felt much better this year in terms of those things, those systems and um, the alignment pieces. We have a couple of new staff. Uh, we have Lizzie Shaw. She is a new fifth grade teacher. She has a year of experience. She started with us today. And Emily Scholl, she is a special education teacher, uh, fresh out of college. So two new staff members there. So we're in a good spot with staffing. Um, just want to recognize some of the different folks or groups that play a big role. Our administrative assistants, I can't say enough. Um, in fact, I said to Kathy Helgett at the meeting, kiddingly, I was able to take some time off in July this summer. Thank you. <laughs> um, but just phenomenal people working in our offices. And I guess that would include Mrs. Hewen as well. She's a part of that team. She's <laughs> been my mentor for a few years now. Um, our web program is excellent. Uh, and that, that's Ashley Wise and the students that she uh, coordinates with. Um, our mentorship program continues to get better and better. I did talk with uh, our new, the new teachers, and one had been in another district for a year, and she said it was amazing. 
um, the support that she felt, and that's just that's the credit to um, the administration, the district, with that piece. Um, just a couple more uh, thank yous, our special ed department for holding together a lot of problem solving, a lot of teamwork to fill some of our um, tricky vacancies. Uh, custodial staff, Jeff came in, hit the ground running. Our building looks excellent, uh, thanks to him and his team. Our tech department, last but not least, our PTO, they stocked our fridge mm. for us. So when we came mm. back, we had all kinds of food today. Uh, Katie Joe, I know you're stepping down, but we have uh, some new leadership there too. So just very, very fortunate and grateful for what's going on around here. So that's about it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. O'Connell. Good evening. <clears throat> Today we kicked off our workshop week with an all staff meeting focusing on our theme of the year, which is goal getter. We took time to celebrate how far we have come in a few short years, as well as the amazing growth that our students have made as a result of the hard work and dedication of the staff. So here's a data point that we reflected on today that I think carries a lot of weight. Um, it was a big moment of celebration for our staff this morning. So in the fall of 2021, 18% of second through fourth graders at the elementary school were in the high risk category in reading. This spring, that number was reduced to 8%. Oh. In kindergarten and first grade in the fall of 2021, 26% of kids were in the high risk category. Um, and 42% of them were at on grade level targets. This spring, there was only 7% in high risk and 77% on grade level. So they've totally flipped where kids are at in just two years, which is amazing. Um, after recognizing how far we've come, everyone took time to talk about how we need goals to keep us aiming higher, and that's why we're working on being goal getters. We took time to talk about how we're pursuing being a school of excellence and getting that endorsement through Minnesota Elementary School Principals Association this year. Then everyone took time to set a personal goal for the year that will be publicly posted to hold them accountable towards working towards that goal. It didn't have to be an academic goal. It could be arriving at work on time or working on work-life balance, which is my personal goal. <laughs> um, and then lastly, we talked about supporting one another through the story of the marigold and the walnut tree, which is a story I can share with you if you're interested in. Um, on Thursday of this week, we're going to have Playworks out for half a day from 9 to noon to do a training with our incoming fourth graders and our high schoolers that will be junior coaches at our recesses to support recess. We have 41 incoming fourth graders coming to attend, seven high schoolers and our two recess staff, and Katie Brandenburg, who's kind of been running this whole thing. Um, this training will equip our students to build their confidence and empower these student leaders to step into the role of coaches, making sure that every child who they help at recess is actively engaged in play every day at recess and that our playground is a positive experience for them every day. Do you have any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Dimler. Good evening. Well, Community Ed took a little sigh of relief. For the first time, we had no programming going on. <laughs> this is our, the start of our summer break this week. Oh. Um, just to give you a little kind of overview of our summer programming, um, for adult and youth programming, we offered um, over 77 courses. We had um, 1,683 participants. 896 of those were unique um, uh, participants, and we had $143,787,000 brought in for revenue. Wow. Oh, wow. So we are kind of excited about that. For ECFE, we had seven courses and 78 participants. 58 of those were unique. So again, excited about our participation. Um, and we served 142 um, children in childcare this summer. So again, our staff just took a sigh of relief and just kind of enjoyed not having, you know, any responsibilities um, this week. Um, as we go into fall, we are looking at offering 118 courses um, in youth and adult and 30 ECFE courses. We have 141 children in childcare and 100 um, children in uh, preschool. 
Uh, today we had our all staff meeting and we had 46 staff um, at the CLC um, that are working between custodial, child care, um, early childhood special ed, um, special education and transitions. Um, and it was a busy day. <laughs> Any questions? We're working on the parking lot for you. We We're appreciate trying. that. <laughs> um, I also do want to share too that uh, this is the first year our early childhood grants have all been um, used up um, with um, $37,530 all going to families for preschool. So we are excited awesome. that we are able to use all of those awesome. this year. So, yeah. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. View. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Just a couple of updates. Um, MCA information will be publicly available on Thursday. Okay. I'll be sharing, a, <coughs> Mr. Schuler actually will be sharing just a little bit of information at our um, all staff meeting and welcome back on Wednesday at about noon. Uh, so we've got some, I think we'll have some fun, exciting uh, news to report there as, as been echoed there. Um, so we'll be sharing that uh, uh, at the next board meeting for sure. We'll talk about that. Um, new teacher orientation was last Wednesday and Thursday. We had seven new t staff members uh, climb aboard. And I got to tell you, I thought we had a wonderful hiring season. I think mm. uh, all seven of those uh, seem to be very quality candidates, very um, seemingly very capable. So very excited about our new hires. I uh, just wanted to um, talk to you about Cinder Kampoff. She'll be delivering our keynote address on Wednesday after Mr. Schuler is complete. Uh, she is an award-winning keynote speaker, and she'll be talking to us on uh, three parts of her 10 powerful practices from um, Beyond Grit. Uh, the three areas of practices, uh, dominate your controllables, master your thoughts, Live and let go will be the <laughs> topics that she covers. She'll cover the other seven uh, on January 20th and on March 31st. She'll be coming back for those three dates. Uh, also, she'll be speaking with our um, athletes from 2.15 to 3.15. Uh, she is a, a psychologist from down in the Mankato area. She's been working uh, with uh, area businesses, Verizon Wireless, Target, Mayo Clinic, uh, and the Minnesota Vikings uh, uh, so she's been working with people kind of trying to keep their professional brains in order and at the top of their game and to have peak performance. And so we're kind of using that and providing that for our staff to help them um, manage uh, their work-life balance and or just work to help them be and perform at their top notch uh, at all times. And yeah, so she'll be um, speaking to us, I think, um, 1230 to 2. As the staff, and 215 to 315 for the students. Any questions? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Payton. Okay. Um, good evening. Um, I want to take the time to start by sharing our special education highlights over the summer. Um, the first one was that we received notification from MDE that. They reviewed our records and we passed 100% for our due process. So um, we met all of our due process requirements according to MDE, so that was great news. In July, um, throughout the month, Monday through Thursday, we had ESY, extended school year. We had 21 students, um, five teachers, six paras, and it um, ran really smoothly and I think the staff and the students were, um, were happy with the results. So that was um, a good feeling. Um, in August, um, we just finished our CPI training, so that's the Crisis Prevention Intervention Training, um, and it's exciting. We had our first um, Watertown Mayor trainer. Um, we got really good um, feedback on it, and they really worked on the new restrictive procedures um, guidelines that they just came out, so it'll be really beneficial for us moving forward into the school year. Uh, Joe Bayou, um, and I met with the non-public principals, um, and the reason we met is to s discuss our child find process, and MDE says that the child find process has to be similar for private schools as it is for um, public schools. 
So as a result, we went over steps to ensure that the requirements were met. Um, currently, about 43% of our initial evaluations come from the non-public schools. Um, therefore, an evaluation process was needed to ensure that we were following the state guidelines. Um, and then also, um, in terms of staffing, we are doing well. Um, I think especially compared to other school districts, we are currently looking for paraprofessionals in our elementary, middle school, and high school, um, and also like a 0.5 half-time position in our DCD high school position. Um, so we are busy posting and getting the word out in social media blasts. Um, today we had a really big day with the back to school workshop today. We had uh, met with the paras for an hour and then the teachers as well. So it was great to see everyone. And everyone seems excited about the, the coming school year. So, any questions? Randy, maybe just, you know, you mentioned that data point from the uh, non-public schools. Yeah. Was it 43 percent of your referrals last year came from a non-public, the non-public schools? Yep, yeah, for initials, yeah. For initial referrals? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a big deal, and I think, you know, it's something uh, board members probably don't know, is that we still have to service all of our non-public schools in our so Mayor Luther and Zion and Christ community in terms of their special ed needs. So if a student is is maybe achieving below grade level, um, you know, we have a pretty firm MTSS process here that you have to go through with documented interventions and things that you've done as a classroom teacher to get, you know, that student supports that they've needed. They don't, if it isn't happening, if it isn't turning the corner, then you move to a referral. But that's, I guess, Randy and Joe's point was meeting with them to kind of give them some supports. That's a really high number, 43% uh, of the kids that were initially getting referred or coming from our not, it's almost half. Um, and that's really a, it's a time component that we're really trying to wrap our hands around because, you know, we're, we're not overly staffed in special education. So getting our, our, what we're trying to do is help them, you know, go through a process in order to hopefully lower that number down um, so it's not so taxing on our staff. Um, and certainly down the road, you know, we can support them even more. So. It, it is a collaborative type of agreement, and, and we're trying to work with them, but I really appreciate Randy and Joe taking the time just to go visit, set up some ideas on how we can support them in, in their process, too. So thanks for bringing and, that and, up. And from a funding aspect, do we, do we get reimbursed from those for, those, for our time spent? We, we do for yeah. the ones that qualify. That qualify, but not the initial, okay. We get the referral. Yep. And it's our once, response. Once they qualify, then... Yep. It's okay. our responsibility to, to vet that child out through yeah. our evaluation process. But, yeah, we wouldn't okay. get paid for that. But as a public school, that's our responsibility. Okay. Good question. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're trying to encourage two six-week interventions because that's what we're doing <coughs> in yeah. the public schools. And so we're trying to say, that what interventions did you do? And if you didn't do them, why didn't you do them? Um, so just a little more communication. Um, and also with the administration because also they're aware of what the students <laughs> Um, are going through just because like you said 43 percent it's a it's a big number of mm -hmm. our staff is spending all the time on those mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. no thank you yep. thanks Randy. appreciate it thank you. mr samansky good evening um just a couple things in the world from the world of activities initial participation numbers <laughs> compared to the last year we're down Roughly about three participants, down seven uh, from two years ago. But keep in mind, middle school volleyball, middle school football just started today. So we're sure that those numbers are going to fluctuate a little bit. So we're hoping, and it looks pretty good, that we'll be over last year's numbers at this time. Uh, numbers are pretty consistent with other schools in the conference. Boys and girls soccer and volleyball have started competitions last week, both home and on the road. Football uh, scrimmage on Saturday as well with four schools. Thank you to our football parents for feeding the players and coaches. All teams except for girls swimming have started competitions by the end of this week. Girls swimming will start next week with the competition. And thank you to the Royal Boosters for feeding our athletes and parents at the CAP meeting and on August 12th to kick off the start of the fall season. Technically girls swimming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Should get him a bus. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I missed that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I think it's a, it's a new ad. I mean, it's not one we've done before, but yeah. I think first home one will be next week. Yeah, next Thursday. Yeah. Yep. Are you sure? I am positive. I, my daughter's the captain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or one of the captains. Yeah. Waconia, 6 p.m. tomorrow. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody's like in full. Everyone will go. Yeah. go right. Right. Here we go. So, any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you I for think adjusting today with the heat index. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And inside. Oh. I'm glad it worked out. We're yeah. very fortunate. We've got great facilities here. And, yeah. and with one team able to practice during the school day because mm -hmm. not teachers. Right. Um, that worked out really well. It freed up some space, so it, it did work out well. So, and one thing to not to remain tell the board too is a great water. installation that's probably happening on Wednesday. It sounds like. I yeah, I. Yes, sir. Kind of. Can we wait on that? Wait on that. No, we're uh, we're having the the Wall of Fame case. Looks like it's going to be tentatively up on Wednesday. Uh, that's the goal from the company, and we're excited about that. So, it's starting to take shape and becoming a little bit more real. Sweet. The custodians of maintenance did a great job again clearing that space out. We removed some pop machines and, and stuff and they took care of taking care of the walls and, and getting a fresh coat of paint on it. So it's going to look sharp. Next month I want a picture. I want to see it. Mm. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. Initial, initial stuff looks good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. Thank you. Admin, you guys are free to go. I know with the weather tonight, yes. you guys can bolt. We're almost done here anyways. Um, but one thing real quick before you guys go. Think about this. MSBA in January is having their, um, their, their conference, their leadership conference. They're looking for um, school districts to present there. K-12, adult, early childhood, uh, successful programs, initiatives, stuff like that. Again, I'm on their board, so I'm trying to pump our district up as much as we can. You know, Nick, whether it's something like web, you know, there's a access on the application on their website. Me and Darren can help you guys through that, too. So, mm -hmm. sorry, didn't want to keep you guys any longer, but throwing a shameless plug Thank out you. there. Thank you. Best of luck on the first day of school. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Roy. All right, Mr. Schuler. Well, I'll be very brief because I think most of them stole most of my information, so I, I, won't, uh, I don't have much to say. We just had a really good two days with our new teachers, like um, as was mentioned, um, only seven this year. I think we're down from about 15 last year, so that was encouraging, uh, meaning that hopefully our turnover is a little bit less potentially. Um, but again, we have some really cool community sponsors. Uh, Mayor Price Financial sponsors our lunch on the first day which we cater uh, in our own kitchens. Uh, Beth from Pat Taher caters that. Uh, and then uh, we go to Mayor for our bus tour, which is always fabulous. Um, and we, we uh, stopped at Agave and uh, the McNeely family is a really big um, school supporter in uh, Mayor, and they've always uh, purchased the meal for all of our new teachers there too, so. And Nikki gave the tour. And Nikki and they, gives she the does tour. A fantastic job. She does. And um, Nick Johnson, our uh, city administrator and mayor, joined us as well for lunch and got an opportunity to talk to our new staff. And then Hunter also joined us as well. So it's nice to kind of get a, a, a nice time with those folks in a different setting. And um, I think they felt really supported. So one thing too, we do a survey at the end, and we can certainly share those survey results too uh, when we onboard these new people. So. Um, I think we, I think it's a pretty good process. And then talking to some of the teachers too, they're very, you know, we really appreciate, you know, learning more about the community. Well, but like we've never, any other district we've ever taught in, there's never been that type of sense of community, you know, taking, the, taking me on a bus, you know, and showing me the local sites and, you know, where our students come from. So to me, that, that goes a long That's way cool. as we've done the last, what, three, four or five mm -hmm. years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun. We enjoy that. Uh, lastly, just a quick update. Uh, obviously, I've been informing you as the board and our community about our lead in the water mm -hmm. concern at the elementary school. And um, we are working to some, some resolution on a few areas. Um, on Friday and Thursday, we talked to um, 
someone at the Department of Health, he had ironically been to Watertown that day and I wanted to connect with them, um, but we were in, in new teacher training that day. Um, but um, Doug from the city of um, water treatment plant met with them. He was doing his annual uh, city inspection, but he had a really good opportunity to talk to Doug about some of our concerns and uh, had a good phone call with him um, that, that next day. And so uh, he led me to another individual who actually specializes in lead in schools. Um, in terms of water and so um, she and I have just not connected yet, but it'll probably happen tomorrow um, But again, um, we feel like we're moving in the right direction We've got a our plumber to come um, this week as well to look at some options for filtration systems again, we can turn off the the, um, the faucets the water faucets that are, are considered above the level uh, we can turn those off but the one that we probably need to use is the kitchen um, we have one kitchen faucet that's higher than uh, normal levels, so uh, that one we're trying to figure out, like ASAP, can we get a filtration system on that to, to get in compliance. So that, that's some of the work that we're doing right now. Obviously, the long-term goal is to see if it is feasible to put uh, filtration systems on all of our faucets. Um, you know, that, that there is going to be obviously a pretty significant cost there, uh, and then just deciding too how much do you really need i think every grade level has four different water um, fountains if you will i should say fountains not faucets but fountains um, one in every corridor every grade level has the water bottle filling station which is filtrated water uh, that's obviously what we're going to be encouraging kids to use the other ones not all of them but the, some of the ones that did come high on the other four in each grade level Again, we're just shutting off and there'll be no use uh, for those at, at this point in time. Is it the faucets in the room or the... No, so it's hard to explain. So if you go in, let's say, the yes. first grade yep. corridor, that they have the bathroom yep. and then they have the bottle filler and a, just a regular push button faucet or a fountain here. Yep. And on the other side of the bathroom wall coming out the other side, there's two more uh, fountains. Okay. And they're just the, you know, the older variety where you push the button and you know but they're just not filtrated water on those so that's what we could retrofit to get them to filtrate or take them out add another bottle filler you know that type of thing so it just we have to just weigh out the costs and see what's most feasible um, but yeah it, again we're, we're surprised I think the thing you're trying to figure out is the why you know and we'll certainly be communicating out to parents um, as well as we get more information but um, yeah, it's very interesting. But the reality is we met the requirements mm -hmm. before. They changed the requirement. Mm -hmm. Now we don't need the requirement. So that's yeah. really the thing to clarify. A month ago or a month and a half, yes. two months ago, Which we would have met the requirement. Letter, I mean, your mm -hmm. letter out to families did say that. You know, yeah, I, we tried to make that a separate entity yeah. in itself that, hey, you know, back in May, actually when we did the testing, right. uh, we, we would have been legal. Uh, unfortunately, the testing changed July 1, and now, yeah. And again, we just want to be transparent, open with families on this. Um, again, it wasn't something we saw coming, but uh, we'll certainly react and do the best we can to make it right and make sure everybody's safe. So I think it's a little ridiculous. They didn't give us a chance to, like, right. study give us, and give us mm -hmm. a year to get in compliance. Like, yeah. that's just ridiculous to go that restrictive from where it was is... Mm -hmm. Pretty insane. Those are some of the questions that I'll be asking too from the, so. the yeah, expert. Thank you. Yeah, that wasn't like, and just say, wow, you know. Why, why did it suddenly go from mm -hmm. that to so yeah. restrictive? Mm -hmm. Like, we didn't all die, pretty sure. Right, <laughs> absolutely. But, but just think there's only a handful of, of fountains. You go into like the older districts where their buildings are right. Right. Mm -hmm. decades, decades yeah. old, with 100 years old, old plus. plus. You know, and, and they're probably smaller than their us. Their budgets mm -hmm. are tighter than ours. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel for those guys. Silly. And like I said, too, middle school was tested in May as well. Came back totally compliant under the five mm -hmm. parts per billion all across the building. So. Well, that's going to be like for even like churches, like in their commercial kitchens mm -hmm. that they have on mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no, it. I think for, it's going to be a big. It, you'll, is it yeah. just for schools? Or is it. All, um, you know. That's a good question. If you don't All know, I know fine. is schools, but okay. I, I, I guess I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, kids are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
We can let them have lead at church. Yes, yeah. <laughs> whatever else, but not at school. That's public funded yeah. here, so is that yeah. different. Is that all you had? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yes, sure, that's all I have. Yes. Is know. there any uh, board yeah. member reports? Yeah. Any other committees uh, going on? Not at this moment, no. Okay. I know policy, you guys have met. Policy, we keep meeting. <laughs> Welcome to our world yeah. in the box. Once a month at least. Um, marketing and communication. I don't know, are we like kicking off our, the school year with an like, in-person meeting? I feel like Probably we should, about. yeah. Yep. And then um, as far as like, the district advisory committee, we usually wait to meet in October, I think now. Yeah. Joe, like we decided, because okay. yep. just to give us some time mm -hmm. to let the initial testing things to come in. And so. um, I'll give you a quick couple of brief MSBA stuff, you know, I seem to be on that tour. Um, they did a communication review, because obviously we get all the emails from MSBA. You know, are they, do they work? Is it too little, too much? Um, and that was actually done by the Daler Group which Ron Wilkie, yeah. our former mm -hmm. superintendent, actually works for them. So it's kind of nice to hear that. Um, dates were provided out for that advocacy tour. Again, not really too sure what those meetings entail. I know I signed up for the one, last one in September, I think. Um, it's like an hour long. I think my understanding is they break you out into groups and you talk about potential things that we want to bring again to that legislative level. Um, I attended the, the leadership conference uh, a couple weeks back. Um, it was effective leadership for student success. The main keynote was Dr. Phil Gore. It was more how boards work together. How do we determine student achievement? You know, sort of like your um, our our vision card. But it's more than that. It wasn't just fast scores, MCA scores. How do you continually monitor? You know, it's not just a snapshot in time. You know, is it monthly updates? How do you kind of Ongoing, um, ongoing reflection, ongoing metrics. So that's something you know maybe we can think about as a board too. Is sort of you know is there something that we could provide more that we could get just to make sure our students aren't falling behind, aren't mm -hmm. they're still progressing. Um, there was a whole session on policies and district success, and that was done by uh, Dr. Terry Morrow, who writes a lot of the MSBA policies, and. The one big thing that I took out of there is there's still no AI policy. Oh. That's going to be, it's going to be more of a guidance. I didn't think about that. Yeah. And it's going to be up to each district to kind huh. of figure out how that works. Uh, AI is completely different in the schools. It could be, you know, from students using it to write their papers. It could be from, you know, us helping write communications out to parents. It can be teachers writing their lesson plan. Right. Yeah. You, you know, all the different yeah. avenues of it. Um, but another thing that he mentioned too was when we're using those model policies, um, one, are we hearing from our students in our communities? You know, think of like a dress code. Are we reaching out to our students? You know, so we're not up here unilaterally making that decision, you know, for hats or whatever it might be. And the other one is the purpose statement. We should be able to edit, we, we can edit that, we can change that to fit Watertown Mayor. It's not just a carte blanche statement. So put in there what we believe, what we feel. So those are some things that I got. Um, leadership conference is January 16th and 17th in Minneapolis. I already mentioned they're looking for excellent showcase. If you want to nominate anybody for Allstate School Board, that's by October 14th. Jim Burns. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you know, there, there's going to be a lot more things that come on that. You know, I, I'm trying to give you guys some more information as, as I know it. Um, but, you know, if you can book out the January 16th, 17th, I think in the last six years, I think I've been more or less the only one that's gone. You know, it'd be it's nice. Hard. It, it is hard. It's during the day. It's a Thursday, Friday. Um, just throwing that out there. You know, I'd like to see everybody go. Is it I'm not going to make it. Is it Martin Luther King weekend? Is it the know. going into it? I don't know. I, I think that sounds like it is. is. It? 16, 17. 16, 17. And again, it, it's one of those things where you, I always pull back a few nuggets and a, some information awesome. here that yeah, we can that, talk yeah. to at the board. But yeah. um, that is what I have. I'll be sending out probably here in the next month or two 
board self eval and legislative stuff for us to talk about. You know, kind of get your guys' ideas as we develop a Watertown mayor legislative priorities. Uh, kind of want to wait till we get MSBAs done as well as uh, MASA, mm -hmm. the Superintendent Association. They're all kind of in lockstep. That helps us. And they want you to copy it. They want you to take their talking points so you can go and talk to your legislators and talk to the community. So mm -hmm. that is what I have. And it is the weekend. Um, yeah. Martin, That's what I thought. Yep. Monday the 20th. Yep. So with that, any other further comments, concerns, questions? Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion made by Ms. Danielson, seconded by Mr. Burns. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion is passed and meeting is adjourned at 7.42 p.m.